Hello there, I'm Scotty, and you're not. And welcome back to Sequel Thon 3, but today we're looking at Mannequin 2 on the move, which is weird, it has a number 2, but it's actually stylized T W O. I don't know. Um, so, this movie is very interesting. So, as mentioned, Big LT brought his double feature over, I bought my own, and we watched both of these back to back. I couldn't remember much of the first one. Or even this one. But one thing I did remember is I distinctly remembering liking the second one better than the first one. While the first one is a 80s classic to be sure, rewatching this, I really enjoyed it. And it's no wonder why, because the director is Stuart Raffle. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because he directed Mac and Me. Ooh, and Tammy and the T-Rex. And if if you go in knowing that, and you watch this movie, you'll know for sure this is the same director who directed Mac and Me and Tammy and the T-Rex. This movie is nuts. Where the first film had some groundedness in reality, where, you know, everyone saw Emmy as a mannequin that is completely thrown out the window they changed the rules on it it is a different curse but they changed the rule on it and i kind of liked it. i think one of my down notes from the first one was that i didn't like that uh <clears throat> that uh the whole they only see her as a mannequin thing and while they do have like a scene of that it doesn't haunt the movie for me. I enjoyed this from beginning to end. And so, uh, the legend here has changed. It, uh, it starts many, 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 many moons ago. Back in an ancient kingdom called, and I'm sorry if I pronounced, mispronounced this, uh, Houdman Konig. Konig? I'm just going to call it Konig from now on because it's going to be hard to remember it. So, in Konig, where... Uh, a prince, Prince William, they William, William Ragsdale. Jeez, I bet they had to search hard to find that name, didn't they? Is in love with a peasant girl named Jessie. Sorry, named Jessie, which is weird for an ancient uh, peasant girl to have the name Jesse. The, the William, I can see it's, it's a royal name, but back in ancient times, Jesse, maybe Jessica, maybe not even, I don't know. But anyway, uh, they're in love, but his mother, the queen, forbids it, and she puts this necklace around her that is cursed by this sorcerer, Spretzel. Uh, played by Terry Kaiser. We'll get to him in a minute. Uh, and she is cursed for 1,000 years. <clears throat> uh, and uh, or until she finds the true love. So, yeah. And so, that's the legend. And now, in modern day 1991 Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at the same store as the first film, Prince and Company, uh, this peasant girl has become like a legend in Koenig, where she's become this, she's kind of out popular the royalty, if you think about it. The tale is about this peasant girl, and then you got the royalty. The whole land is cursed too, because uh, Prince William curses the land so it rains forever and ever and ever but you know that happens in a lot of movies where the land is cursed and it rains forever bad weather if that actually happened what rained forever the whole thing would be flooded because it would never stop raining right so it would never stop rising it isn't i don't know <clears throat> like rocker doodle had that where it rained a lot and realistically they were drowned in fact they did portray it realistically in the real world where like Cows were having trouble, and they were trying to. You know, 
no flies again. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so it goes to modern day. We meet Jason, played by William Ragsdale, who is the reincarnation of Prince William. And he's living with his mother, who is the reincarnation of the Queen, but she's not a villain, which is really weird. And it's also really weird that they're not Koenig royalty. You think it, they look the same. They're, it, maybe their reincarnation is not descendants. Maybe that's why. They do show the queen, but I can't. She's so far away, I can't tell if it's the same actress. Whatever. Count Spretzel, played wonderfully by Terry Kaiser, has come to America with his three dumbasses. Three German dumbasses and a mole with hair all the way down to here. And he is with the pe with the peasant girl because he believes in this curse. And so he wants to be her true love and marry her and go off to Bermuda. Bermuda! And so, uh, yes. And as you can imagine, Terry Kaiser is the best thing in this movie. Well, yes. Best thing in this movie. But second to him is the returning Hollywood Montrose, played once again by me, Shaq Taylor. And where he was a part of the first film, he is everywhere in this film, and he is let off the... Let, just let off the cuff. He is all over the place. Now, there is only two returning actors from, from the first film that come back. Me, Shaq Taylor is one of them. The other one is... The guy who was the janitor in the last film, he's now a security guard. They don't know, they don't say if it's the same character. His name is Andy in this one. But it's the same actor. I know him as Mr. Gullible from The Amanda Show. And yes, that's two movies in a row with a connection to The Amanda Show, with John Cassier showing up in G George of the Jungle 2, and now Mr. Gullible. I don't know, there's a connection there, I guess. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, in this version... In, in, in this movie, it's not a curse where only he can see her as a human, everyone else sees her as a, as a mannequin. No. As soon as that necklace comes off, she's human. You know? But it's weird because the, the curse over the land has not been lifted. So maybe she has to marry the descendant first, or marry her true love first before it gets cleared. I don't know if uh, Hollywood does mention when he confides in him that he says that the mannequin is real, he's in love with her and everything, and he, you know, Hollywood says, oh, it's happened before, I believe you, the whole thing, and, yeah. So, let's talk about Count Spetzel, okay, because this character steals the show. He is the villain, much like Dr. Walkenstein, in Tammy and the T-Rex, also played by Kaiser. But, uh, he is just... So he has these three bumbling German idiots that work for him. These muscle-bound buff idiots. Which I equate to the security guard from the first film. I think they're very similar to that. There's a bumbling security guard in this one. But I think Eddie's a little more competent than the guy from the first film. <coughs> or even these guys. Because they're stupid. They're chasing after them. I, I gotta hand it to them though. They're kind of smart a little bit in one thing. Where... So... The whole... Meet cute, I guess you could call it. Where he meets the mannequin for the first time. Is that they get a call. That the... The truck carrying the peasant girl is is like stuck on a bridge so they go there it's gonna tip over and the three guys are trying to save her but she falls into the water so jason jumps in after her and then they, they take her back to the store and leave the three lonely idiots behind so they're like trying to walk there and they're gonna hitchhike so what do they do three muscle bound hunks right they take their shirts off and catch the eye of two garbage ladies who throw them into the garbage truck and drive off with them they do get back to the store. I thought they were just going to throw them in the garbage and be done with them. But <clears throat> it's when they showed up again that I realized they were going to be reoccurring characters. Like I said, I've seen this before, but it's been a few years. Uh, yeah. The thing in this one is a car. Like, he has a car. It's like, it's a motorcycle in the first film, right? It's a car in this one. They use Hollywood's car at one point. 
uh, Hollywood is, like I said, he's off the cuff, and he is at his at full blast, honey, is what he would say. At one point, Jason gets arrested, and he dresses up as a as a master sergeant, whatever he says his name is. Uh, Butch. Butch Montrose. Are we supposed to believe that's his real first name? I, I, I refuse to believe he was born with Hollywood. But Butch is his first name. I do like it, though, when he's explaining... <laughs> When he was explaining that he was in the in the Marines, like, you're in the Marines? Yes. They were looking for a few good men, and so was I. It made me laugh. <clears throat> and also confirmation that he's actually gay, because I don't think I don't think he got that confirmation in the first film. So, you know, he was just eccentric in that film. Maybe this one is officially he's gay. So, which is cool. Uh, but he, it's funny, because he's trying to stay stoic. By also kind of reverting back into Hollywoodisms. And he gets Jason out of there. And they're walking slowly. And then someone realizes what's going on. And goes, hey. And he's like, whoo. And like, completely reverts back to Hollywood. Whoo, run, honey. And just. <laughs> oh, that he does do it there, too. Because he's, when he, when he's, he goes, like, hey, whoo. Uh, I mean. <clears throat> yes? No. Uh, and then later with, I'm going to call him Walkenstein. With, shh. Spretzer, Spretzler, Spre wrong one, Spretzer, uh, he, uh, he's taking Jesse in the balloon because, I don't know, they thought it would be more romantic. Said the, one of the German dudes. The other two are already taken out. There's one guy left. And Jason hits him in the nuts. And then punches him in the face. And then Hollywood's like. Let me fish him honey. He goes. And he just falls over. Oh my god. I left my ass off. And. Uh, and so yeah. He comes to the rescue. What, what's the way that they, they defeat this guy? Count Spletzer. They put the necklace on him and she curses him. Although, I don't understand why she had to curse him. Because earlier, Hollywood, Hollywood put the the necklace on and he turned into a mannequin. I guess so that they couldn't just take the necklace off of him again. But he gets smushed into the ground. But he gets put back together. You know, he's a legend. Uh... Oh, I forgot to mention, there's actually four things that return from the first film. There is the department store. Andy, or that actor, at least. And Meshach Taylor's Hollywood, but also the song that plays at the end of the film. And we can build this world together. Nothing's gonna stop us now. It's weird though because they play it in the credits. So it plays it in the end of the movie and it goes to the credits. When the credits start, it plays the second verse and then it plays the second verse again. I'm like, wait, what? And the, the song doesn't even actually finish. Like it, the, I don't know, maybe the credits do keep going. I just turn them off after a while. But this was fun. One thing I will of note, I don't, like that he got arrested i understand why it had to happen so that spritzer could get the mannequin again but it ends up back at the department store they do this whole thing this whole song and dance where it was a performance thing that hollywood set up and then uh i was called him william william raxdale jason comes in and then he has a a sword duel with count spritzer and uh, Spretzel, Spretzel. I'm saying it wrong. We count Spretzel. They keep calling him Spritzel, and that's to go Spretzel. Oh, I love Terry Kaiser. Stop these! No. Uh, I do love his reaction though when it starts off real quaint, right? When the performance starts, and this goes into the urban '90s this thing, and he's like, "What is this? What the hell is this?" You know, and the whole time this is going on, by the way, the people watching thinking it's part of the act. They're thinking it's part of the act. So when she's turned human, which convinces Stuart Pack Pankin's character, Mr. James, 
Mr. Jones. Uh, that she's real, apparently. He gets shot in the foot. And people are just going along with it. I do love, though, how after Jason jumps off, you see, you see the door, door open behind Hollywood. And, like, there's, like, two people carrying him as he's coming up. I'm like, well, what? Why the hell is he up there to begin with? But it's funny as hell. And yes, it, this is very much the same guy who would eventually give us Tammy the T-Rex. And it makes me want to get Mac and me just to see how fucking stupid that movie is. Because I enjoyed this from beginning to end. And I hate to say this. Because I know that the first Mannequin is, a, is an 80s classic. But I do like this better than the f first one. And as weird as it is. I'm going to send it to the moon. Would you have thought would you have thought that Mannequin 2 would be the one that I give the high score to? I wouldn't. But you know what? I, I can't help it. Piece of the couch. Uh, I can't help it. I absolutely love this movie. I it doesn't hurt that I find Christy Swanson more attractive than the Sex in the City chick. Kim Control. Oh, another complaint I have though, uh, where in the first film the mannequin looked just like Kim Control, this mannequin doesn't look a thing like Christy Swanson. Like, not at all. Not at all. But I enjoyed this movie. I did. Oh, by the way, McCod Taylor actually plays two. Meshach Taylor, Taylor, excuse me. Meshach Taylor plays two characters in this. He's Hollywood, and then he is the bouncer. At the club that they go to, I was like, "Is that is that him? It is him. He's playing. The, I don't know why. It's just a random cameo. Maybe, maybe they, the actor that they had wasn't available. They had to have someone fill in. I don't know, but it's weird. And hey, this is for your expectations because you think, you know, he's turning people left and right. They're not cool, and you think well, he's gonna let her in, but not him. No, they both get to go in. Weirdly enough, but." uh I bet if he told him that he lived with his mom, you know. By the way, I want to know how big the furniture bill was. She bought the furniture with his employee discount thingy, but he still got to pay for it. So, point, point, point account, excuse me. So, he's, he, I don't know. Even when she says, oh, I bought it with your card thingy, he goes, ouch. So, and then Stuart Packin accuses him of stealing it, but like, I bet she's gonna have to explain. No, she bought it with this. Like, and he helped, he, he didn't even look at the files and say it was bought with his account, so. Although, it wasn't bought by him, so technically, he could swivel out of that and say, well, I didn't actually buy it, she did. It was illegal, just kind of take it back. Real world, she'd probably go to jail, but she's not, she doesn't technically exist, to be honest. And I love how they... Yeah, I, I keep going. I'm keeping going. I love how they showed that she didn't know what modern day stuff was. I don't think they did enough of that in the first one. Like, he tries to show her on TV. She freaks out. Get me out of this box! I kind of like that. Anyway, I'm done gushing about this movie. I loved it. Okay? I enjoyed it from the end, man. So, what are your thoughts on Mannequin 2? On the move? Let me know in the comments. Let me make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.